Hello, my name is Joe Cogliano. I've been a resident of the town of Norton for about six years, but I began working in the town when I was a child in 1975 on the family farm. Today I would like to speak with you about my concerns regarding the proposed change to a new charter and a town council. I have reviewed the materials provided by the Charter Commission and comments by interested parties and have concluded the proposal is unnecessary and will negatively impact the town. The Charter Commission is proposing a radical change from town meeting to town council. The two main reasons stated for this change are the core concerns raised in the Charter Commission final report, including communication, accountability, transparency, planning, and goal setting. The other issue is lack of participation at town meeting with the resulting claim of lack of representation. First, the core concerns raised by the Charter Commission do not require a change from town meeting to town council. Most of these concerns are management issues that should be placed before the town manager, select board, and other boards and committees by any concerned citizens requesting appropriate change. These concerns are not sufficient reason to change to a different form of government because they can be addressed within our present system. If change is necessary, we don't need to change our government system, we need to change how our town management, town manager, select board, and committees interact with us. Second, the Charter Commission proposal to deal with a lack of participation at town meeting with the election of seven at-large town council members to replace the voters at town meeting. Supporters of the Charter Commission believe lack of participation indicates a problem, but it can also mean people are satisfied with the status quo or they're so busy they choose to participate when it's most important for them to do so. Even if every town voter elected the seven at-large town council members, this will not improve participation or representation because it requires town voters to transfer their voting rights to the town council for all future decisions. It is simply impossible for seven politicians to understand or know the interests of 20,000 people or to represent all those people's varied interests at the same time. A claim of better representation by participation of 2,000 voters versus 200 is irrelevant when you have no vote on any decisions that follow. We are promised dedicated decision makers under the new plan, but will have no control over their decisions. Participation does not increase by transferring the voting rights of the people to seven elected politicians. Now the proposed charter should be rejected because it has significant flaws, including the following. It consolidates power into the town manager and four elected town council members, the majority of the seven so that effectively five people will control, control the town. It removes the protective checks and balances of an independence finance committee, the select board, the moderator, and the most important, the people's vote. Decisions regarding proposed developments and bylaw changes will be made by the town council, not the voters, who are the ones that these decisions impact the most. Regarding Proposition 2 and a half, appropriations for the first year must be spent as authorized, but subsequent years of a budget override will be decided by town council and not town meeting voters. Town council will decide how the money is spent, not the residents. It also prevents line items from being increased on budgets, which will reduce options and create more problems. If the town manager wanted to, to decrease the police budget, the town council could not increase this item. Town council members can appoint vacant seats on the council if these seats are not filled by elected candidates. My understanding is that area towns using a town council have reported problems attracting candidates to that position. Well, what is the underlying message of the proposed new charter plan? Basically, it's that town meeting matters are complex, difficult, time-consuming, and town meeting is a burden, and it's not fair that everybody can't go. So just transfer your voting rights to town council, and they will take care of everything for you. I'm sorry, I don't believe that. Personally, I have faith in you to make the best decisions for yourself and your family, and not in seven elected politicians. The actual impacts of the proposal are opposite of what is being claimed. They include power consolidation, a transfer of voting rights which reduces participation and increases disenfranchisement, 
removal of pr protective checks and balances, and ultimately all of this will allow special interests to move the town in any direction they desire. Well, why maintain town meeting? Even if you believe a town council is a good idea, the flaws in this plan are too serious to accept. If you are unhappy with the present system, giving the town manager more power and transferring your voting rights to seven politicians is certainly not the answer. With town meeting, people can choose to participate without giving up their rights. The core concerns identified by the Charter Commission can be addressed in our present form of government. We can make appropriate changes to address people's concerns and still keep our rights with town meeting. Transferring our voting rights to seven politicians won't solve our problems. It will create a new set of problems and may even magnify existing problems. What is the decision that you are being asked to make? Your vote will decide whether you keep your rights to decide what is best for you and your family within the town meeting format or to transfer your rights to people who believe they know what is best for you via town council. In my opinion, we must all come together to stop this well-meaning but flawed proposal. Democrats, Republicans, independents, long-term residents, and newcomers, we can accept and respect our differences but come together to protect our rights. This is our common ground. This is where we can stand together. We don't have to assume that this proposal is the future. This is a mistake and it's an error for us to go down this path. I believe we are all equal at town meeting. We are not equal under the biases of seven elected politicians. The decision is actually quite simple. Who is going to control the town and who will best represent your interests? You or the town manager and four elected politicians? This situation requires action. Please vote no on question one on Saturday, April 10th. I believe we can improve town government and keep town meeting. Please speak with family members and friends about why it's important to support town meeting. You have to stand up to protect your rights now. We all have to do this. We must act to protect our rights, our families, our neighborhoods, the town, and to do what's necessary to protect future generations. My fear is that all that is necessary for a loss of freedom is for good people to do nothing. Now is the time to stand and protect your rights. Now is the time for all of us to stand together. You can learn more at SaveNortonTownMeeting.com. Thank you for your time.